Well, good evening, JNAC. God bless. Good to be here on another day of Ministry Moments. My name is Marcus McAllister. As always, I'm honored to be with you guys, to be able to encourage and to be able to talk about a variety of things and things that hopefully can lift you up in this time that we're in right now. So um, I, I'm going to get right to it. Um, once again, I'm glad to be here. God bless you. And I hope that um, this um, conversation and message that it touches someone today. Um, so the message I want to talk about today, if I was to give this message a title, I would call it Credible Messenger. And I was thinking about the, the word Credible Messenger because um, in the work that I do, I work for um, Cure Violence Global. I happen to have on my work shirt today. Um, I've been training all day today. And, you know, I do violence prevention and I train on violence prevention and we work in a variety of neighborhoods throughout the country, sometimes the most roughest neighborhoods in the country, out the country. And so in order for us to be able to um, engage and p potentially stop and mediate conflict on the streets before it happens, after it happens, stop retaliation and whatnot, you have to have what you call credible messengers. So when we do hiring panels, we hire people that are credible messengers. And, and, and in the sense of the job, a credible messenger is somebody that they have influence, um, they, they've been there, done that. Um, they, they have a lot of respect. Um, they know the terrain. They know what goes on in the streets. And so they, they, they carry what we call a tremendous amount of credibility. So we call them credible messengers because they're able to get the message across. You know, they're able to talk somebody down and, you know, more or less uh, encourage them not to go retaliate or not shoot. And they can use their example of what they've been through or they've been to jail or they've been shot or whatever it may be. Um, in their past that lends towards credibility in the, in the vein of being in the streets. So that's why I was thinking about that. And, and I'm, I'm constantly dealing with individuals that are credible messengers in the sense of the job. And um, I once was a violence interrupter before I became a trainer. And so I had tremendous credibility um, in the area that I worked at because everyone knew me. I knew them. Unfortunately, you know, I've been locked up. I've been... Um, I've been affiliated with gangs, um, a variety of things that people wouldn't even know about me um, that lends to my credibility um, in doing the work when I got started. But I started to think about the, um, the ministry in the church, and I want to talk a little bit about, about the context of a credible messenger in the kingdom. See, there's a, there's a lot of things going on right now in the world. Um, and specifically, a lot of things going on that's affecting the kingdom of God or affecting, I mean, the saints and not so much the kingdom. It's affecting the saints. And right now, I think that um, just as we have credible messengers that are that were out in the streets trying to make peace and stop violence and stuff, we need credible messengers to step up within the um, body of Christ to be credible and to be able to uh, inter intervene to their Christian brothers and sisters. And so let's, let's look at it right now. Just think about the word credible. So credible comes from a Latin word, um, credibilis, right? And that mean, it, it means worthy to be believed. Um, so th to have credibility or credibilis, it means worthy to be believed. Another definition of credibility is defined as the quality or power of inspiring belief. So just think about those two topics right there, worthy to be believed, and then also have a quality or po power of inspiring belief. Truly something that in the, in the faith that we all should aspire to have and aspire to do. Um, that quality or power, you know, it comes in strong when you have been um, blessed to have the Holy Ghost or have the Holy Spirit inside you. That's why I'm always saying that if you have not experienced or, or have not received the Holy Spirit since you believe, you need to ask God and pray about that and get that because it will help you a lot. It will give you a, a wealth of credibility um, in, the, in, the, in the foundation of being a saint in the, in the, in the church and being just a, a, um, a person that can uplift their brother and sister in Christ. So I was looking at a few scriptures. Um, so obviously the, the, the ultimate credible messenger um, in the sense of Christianity was Christ. Obviously, he's the ultimate credible messenger, right? Because, I mean, he had the spirit of God inside of him. I mean, he was, um, you know, he was preparing credible messengers. So you think about the, the 12 disciples. I mean, he, he chose these individuals. And then when I think about credible messengers in the work I do, 
usually the people that are doing the work that I'm involved in, when I'm talking about one thing, when I'm going back to the worldly sense of cure violence, they're people that people might have gave up on. They got backgrounds, they've been this, and people might think that they don't have nothing in them. And, and Christ did the same thing. He grabbed people, tax collectors, and he grabbed all the people that no one would have thought could have credibility to do the things that he wanted them to do um, in the ministry. And so he grabbed, you know, Peter and, you know, he grabbed, I mean, uh, think about Paul, and we'll talk about that in a minute as I tie it in. But I was thinking about, um, and, and there's one scripture, and this scripture um, has come up a couple times in our Bible studies and stuff, and I was just thinking about it. It's Matthew 7, 29, and it says, um, For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes, um, the scribes being not as the teachers of the law. So, you know, Jesus had credibility. So he's not like one um, that need, he knew what he was talking about. He had the spirit in him, and he, and, and he taught was one having authority, meaning like I know what I'm saying. I've been there. I've done that. I'm telling you all things that I know. And not so much like somebody that um, has no authority, but you're just reading off of something, and really you can't feel it, right? You can't feel what somebody is trying to tell you. Um, and that's kind of like the scribes were just reading from something. And it's almost like in my work, uh, we got people that go to school for, for social work and, and they, they know all the ins and outs and all the different things. And I'm not knocking social workers. I love them, you know, because in a sense, what we do is very similar to what they do. But the thing that they lack that we have, once again, it goes back to that credibility, that, um, that understanding, that kind of the relatability, right, of the people that we're dealing with. So, but in, in, in the sense of, um, biblical and in, in the sense of Christian, it's not all the way the same because, like I say, the Holy Spirit gives you all that understanding. The Holy Spirit gives you all the knowledge you need. So it is like the, the one that gives you that credibility and lets the Spirit speak for you when you have to indulge somebody. So um, I was saying, so Jesus was preparing credible messengers. Um, um, he, he even like, even after when he, after he was crucified and he re resurrected and then before he left, um, his disciples and he told them, you know, that he was going to send them a comforter. And, and you know, he knew that I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a bless my, my believers with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, so, so it can help them. And he said he wanted them to be witnesses onto the end of the world and just uh, witness about, about him and what they had learned and what they had seen and just about the gospel and whatnot. And so they were able to do that once the Holy Spirit came upon them and it made all sense of all the things they had seen and been with Jesus. But he wasn't just going to stop there. But I want to go, um, let's just go to 2 Corinthians um, chapter 1. So I'm just reading like verses 3 and 4, which I'm just tackling on top of that um, comforter thing. So it says, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort who comfort of us in all our tribulations, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. So that's why I'm saying, like, the church needs more credible messengers. Like, we have to um, look out for one another. We have to lift each other up. Um, we have to be the ones to, um, to bring the good news, even if you're a believer. We can't assume just because we have people in the church or people that are saved that they don't go through certain things. That's why it's so important to stay in tune and be that credible individual. Because think about it. When you've been through something and, you know, God has blessed you and he's, and he's turned you around and then you go to one of your brothers and sisters that might be struggling with something, you have a tremendous amount of credibility because not only can you share with them what God has brought you out of, you understand what they're going through. I mean, you have empathy because you've been there. And so it's even like what's going on now with in all the, in the country with so many things and so many people are upset and I'm speaking once again to the body of Christ I mean that's why it's important for us to be credible and to be to give that wisdom and knowledge that God has given us to as many people in the faith that we can so they can be strengthened um, as it said you know it said when you're in trouble by the comfort wherein we ourselves are comforted of God so God has comforted, comforted us in these situations he's expecting us to comfort other in, individuals I mean to be a to be a credible messenger um, it, that is the Great Commission. You've heard that in, in the Bible where it talks about the Great Commission. That's the Great Commission to the saints, to the disciples. We're supposed to tell about the goodness of God, tell about the greatness of the Lord, um, um, teach all the nations, like it says in Matthew, um, where it talks about how he, he's teaching them to not only to teach all the nations, but teach them to observe the things that he commanded them to do. So he was, Jesus was building credible messengers. And he didn't just stop with the, um, um, the 12 disciples. I mean, Paul, I think about Paul. 
Paul was definitely an incredible messenger. I mean, Paul, and look, and Paul was the one that persecuted. He persecuted the Christians. So God knew, let me, you know, because when you transform certain individuals, their credibility goes to the, to the moon because when you can see somebody that you knew used to be persecuting everyone and now all of a sudden he or she is the one that's trying to bring people to God and, and you know their background and you know their history, it just makes you say, wow, God is tremendous. Look what he did to that individual. So I'm sure in Paul's days, um, first, obviously, some of the Christians were scared because they didn't know what this was. But as they started to see the things that he was saying, the things that he was doing, and even those that he might have been that might have been on his side when he was persecuting Christians, they had to be like amazed at this. But that's how God operates. You know, He's building up credible messengers, and we need to build each other up um, because He's He's given us the power to also create more credible messengers. Um, and it didn't stop with that. Paul, so if you think about it, Jesus had the 12 disciples. So I'm going to call it 12 credible messengers that bred other credible messengers. Paul, Paul started to have his credible messengers. Paul started to have people underneath him that he believed in, and he started to teach them and, and encourage them so they could do the same thing. And I think of one particular um, credible messenger of Paul's was Timothy. You know, um, um, Timothy, when, when Paul first met Timothy, um, when it's, I was reading in the Bible and just doing some study and stuff is that it, it said that Timothy was already a respected member of the Christian congregation, um, as were his grandmother and his mother. So they had tremendous credibility. And so Paul, you know, seeing that, seeing the type of person that um, Timothy was, see, seeing about the credibility he had, he knew that he could use him as a credible messenger to continue on with the ministry, the faith, and push that message out there um, further. And then also, you know, Timothy's father, he was a, a Greek Gentile. So once again, that was going to fall right into place of being a credible messenger as Paul was sent to teach the gospel to the Gentiles and those alike throughout the, um, throughout the world. So let's go to um, 2 Timothy. Since we're talking about Timothy, let's um, jump right into it. Um, 2 Timothy 3, um, let's go to verse. So it's, it's really verse 10 through 17, but I'm going to read verse 10 right now. It says, um, so this is Paul um, speaking to Timothy. So he's speaking to somebody that he's building up as a credible messenger. He said, but thou hast fully known my doctrine, my manner of life, my purpose, my faith, my long suffering, my charity, my patience. So here go Paul telling Timothy about him, you know, like I'm, I'm bringing you up. I'm, 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 I'm building you up to be a stronger, credible messenger so, so that Timothy could do the same thing. And, and, and Timothy did go on to do great things. But then if I scroll down, um, um, it's oh, 14 says, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and has been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. So like pastor, pastor is, is my pastor, Pastor John I. Capels, right? And so you know, he's teaching us. He's, he's preaching to us. He's teaching us. And so he's building up credible messengers. And, and of course, I want to be a credible messenger for my pastor because it goes like that. I mean, I understand the spirit of God and, and, um, and, and serving um, Christ and stuff, but I do have a leader and he's building me up to be a better leader. And, it's, and the onus is on me to build up other leaders and, and help them to be more credible messengers. Because as I said, the church is in need of a lot of credibility with amongst, the, amongst ourselves to be credible messengers in the faith. And then I go down, um, it says, it said, verse 17 says that that man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So you're building up credible messengers. We're trying to strengthen the, the, the movement, strengthen the church. I mean, right now there's a movement going on and I'm with it. You know, you got the Black Lives Matter movement. You got all these movement going on, but I'm speaking to the people of God. We got to have our movement going on where we're building each other up and building our faith up and building one another up so that we do not fall victim to the things of the world and and be just like the world. We have to be our own entity to get stronger and stronger. Um, so, you know, when you when I was I was reading that, that, that passage from the book of Timothy, and so I was, once again, doing my best to study. The book of Timothy is, is, um, is considered to be one of the pastoral epistles. So um, it's called a pastoral epistle because it relates to church leaders um, um, and those that are were thought of as pastors or are just the shepherds, you know, um, literally shepherds um, that are that were being in the making and stuff. So Paul was speaking to Timothy. And so one of the things that he um, was spoke to Timothy and Timothy is 2 Timothy chapter 1, 
verse 7 to 8, it says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Now, you hear that. That's been talked about. We talked about it at the beginning of this pandemic. But this was Paul saying this to, um, to Timothy. Timothy had a tendency to be timid, they said. You know, so he wanted Timothy to be vocal. You know what I'm saying? Don't be scared to, 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 to preach the gospel. Don't be scared to say the things which are right and to stand on truth. Um, and the Holy Ghost, you know, it gives you truth and gives you peace. And, you know, it was saying, but be thou therefore, um, be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. So once again, he was strengthening, um, he was strengthening um, Timothy to be a strong, credible messenger, to be, to be strong in the face. It says right here in verse 13 of that same chapter of 2 Timothy, it says, Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. Now you see Paul keeps saying what you have heard of me because that's how it goes. You learn from one another. And so he was learning from Paul. I mean, learning from Paul, and I'm sure Timothy would take that and others would say what they learned from Timothy. And that's what I'm saying. Credible messengers. We have to continue to push um, the message that we get, especially I'm speaking to my JNAC, Jesus name, saints, pastors, giving us a lot of good um, knowledge in Wednesday night Bible study and just in, in general. And it's important for us to take that and um, make sure we, we remind each other of it. I mean, sometimes we hear the message on Sunday, give a call, maybe have some conversations, but lift one another up um, in the faith. Um, so Timothy was a credible messenger for Paul. Another, um, let's go to uh, Philippians, because I, I found a few scriptures. I want to make sure I get them in in the time that I have. So let's go to Philippians chapter 2. Uh, we're going to go down to um, verse... Um, 19 where it says it says verse 19 but I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Tim Timotheus shortly unto you that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state see Paul you know he trusted Timothy he knew um he even said that there's no one like him I think it comes up where it says yeah verse 20 says for I have no man like-minded who would naturally care for your state sake for for all seek their own not the things which are of Jesus Christ. So he was trying to say Timothy has a good spirit. Timothy is a credible messenger. He's not seeking his own. He's seeking to help others. He's, he's really um, taking on this ability to be a credible messenger and to be someone who, um, who not only cares about his own self, but cares about the well-being of the saints, cares about one another. And, and that's what we believe in here at Jesus' name is caring for one another caring for each other, our families, and just looking out for one another and um, being that credible messenger. So I like what, what he said about there was no one like him. But then another um, credible messenger that you might have heard of um, or, or might have heard of and just walked past you because he's not mentioned in the Bible a lot, but it is Ephroditus. Um, he was a, cre a credible messenger that was from Philippi. So, you know, there was credible messengers starting to be built all in the kingdom around. And so if we go to Philippians 2, we're in 2 now, yeah, verse 20, yeah, verse 25, it says, Yet I suppose it necessary to send to you Ephroditus, my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier, but your messenger, let me say that again, but your credible messenger and he that ministered to my wants. So, the Philippians had sent Ephroditus to Paul. Once again, they knew that Ephroditus was credible. He was a credible messenger. They sent him to Paul to tend to Paul's needs. And Paul acknowledged that and, um, and talked about the fact that he had came down. And then if you go down to um, verse 28 of that same chapter, it says, I sent him therefore the more carefully that when you see him again, you may rejoice and that I may be less sorrowful. It says, receive him therefore in the Lord with all gladness and hold such in reputation. So it's basically saying he's a credible messenger. Hold him in high regard. You know, he, he's trying to build up people and he's come to help me out. And, and so a lot of times that's how we would do in my work. Like I would get introduced to somebody who I didn't know. And, and the guy that introduced me has a bunch of, a lot of credibility. And he would say to the person that he's introducing to me on his name and his word alone, because he's credible, uh, credible, he would say, you can mess with Marcus. He's good people. You, you've been through that where somebody will give you a cosign. And so I'm saying in the body of Christ, we have to do that. We have to, 
we have to stamp one another and build each other up and make that uh, easy, um, they call it a soft pass off, where, where individuals can be a blessing to one another. Um, and so, you know, Ephroditus was valued as a partner to Paul. So when you think about Paul had credible messengers, he had uh, Crescent, Titus, Tychicus, Timothy, and then he had even a guy by the name of Demos or Demos. But this particular credible messenger, he left Paul. He forsaked him because he loved the world. And that's why it's important that we build each other up because we don't want the world to swallow up some of our potential great credible messengers, some of our leaders and stuff. We don't want the world to swallow them up, so we have to build one another up. And so Demas left Paul because it said that he loved the world. He started off and he had credibility and he was doing great things, but you can lose your credibility as well. You could be a saint today and praising God and then somebody sees something that you do crazy and you can lose your credibility with them. I'm not speaking about with God because God has a way of having mercy and forgiving you, but man has a tendency. You can't have too many mistakes with man and it's hard sometimes to get back things right. You know, if you are um, screaming, I love God, hallelujah, and people see you, and then the next thing you know, they catch you on a viral video, and you didn't beat the mess out of your wife, or you didn't did something crazy. Your credibility as a Christian then just went out the, it went out the back door, and we don't want that. And so we are, um, as I say on my job, when I'm training individuals, potential credible messengers, I don't want none of them to relapse. I don't want them to fall back into the things that they used to be into, and just like more so, I really don't want my brothers and sisters in Christ to fall back into the things that they might have been into or the things that can take them off. So in closing, I just like to say credible messengers, they have to know and they have to be able to communicate every good thing that God has done for you. Remember all the great things God has done for you. Remember all the things that he's brought you out of because that will bless you to be a credible messenger and bring the good word to somebody else, especially those of the faith. God bless you. I pray that, that this message has touched someone and that you take in what I'm saying about practice being a credible messenger. You have to constantly want to be good at what you do and constantly want to say the right things to people and help them out when they're in time of need. As always, join us on Wednesday for Bible study. Um, join us on Monday, Musical Mondays that we have. You can go to our, our Facebook page. Um, you can go to our www.jnac.org. You can download the JNAC app. We have a variety of ways that we're able to get the message to you, and you can hear it from a variety of credible messengers. God bless you.